Natalia, thank you so much for joining us on VZN TV. I'm really excited to talk to you about fitness and health and all the things that are on everyone's mind here in March, especially, I feel like. Um, yeah, so will you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you are so accomplished in the fitness industry and as an entrepreneur, so give us the background. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. Um, I was very honored when you sent me the message inviting me. So here we are. So a little bit uh, about me. Now um, I help ambitious moms regain their fitness, simplify their fitness and feel the best that they can feel with all the juggling balls that they have uh, going on. Uh, but my background comes actually from being a fitness competitor. I did fitness competitions and I won the Olympia, which is the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world. Um, that is so amazing. But I mean, I already knew that about you, but I'm like, that is just so, what an accomplishment. I yeah, mean, wow. That was pretty amazing. And then um, after that, I had the opportunity of doing seminars in over 30 different countries around the world. And I've been featured in magazines and talked mm -hmm. about fitness in magazines um, in about 25 different countries. And I've been on the cover of a lot of these magazines. So, so I've many beautiful covers. Oh my gosh. If you just go to uh, your website, it's like just yeah. stunning. You're giving <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so I feel like my experience with very um, extreme approaches to fitness that came mm -hmm. from the uh, competition background when I mean, the, at the time of life that I did that, I didn't have a whole bunch going on in my life as far as like a family, a husband, uh, like a career. It was like a job. And then I could spend as much time in the gym as I wanted. So mm -hmm. transitioning from that approach to being a mom of two kids that were born 14 months apart and having a family and starting my career, that was uh, something that I really wanted to take off. I had to change my approach and simplify my fitness. And that is kind of how my business evolved to simplify fitness to most people who are used to the overcomplication of the fitness industry. I want to get started with, well, and okay, this is a big one. And I had a lot of people on Instagram DM me about this, but when it comes to fitness, motivation is something that a lot of people rely on and they always want to know, how do I get motivated? How do I stay motivated? Tell us your fitness philosophy on motivation. Um, I think that motivation is a load of crap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Um, we had to do the censor part here because TV, but, mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of how I feel because I feel like so many people rely on motivation. Mm -hmm. And even for me, fitness is a big part of my life, not only from like something that I truly enjoy doing, but it's also my kind of job. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up every day motivated to go to the gym. I don't wake up every day motivated to eat Amen. like a more healthy diet, but it has become a habit of mine to get ready uh, in the morning, get ready with gym clothes, get my kids to school, go to the gym, come back home and work. Um, it's just part of my day that if that part goes missing, I it just feels off because it is already a habit that has been established. And I am all about motivation and using that period of motivation to create, or at least start creating habits that will support your long-term goal. So whatever it is that you want to accomplish can be sustainable. And it's not right. just and that's why there is actually a research that says that about over 80% of people have already given up on their uh, New Year's resolutions by the second week of February. And that's kind of when the motivation wow. is off mm -hmm. and they have, they have created unsustainable habits in that period of time. And then they're like, oh, screw this. There is no way I can do it. And then they go back to that yo-yo diet cycle that doesn't work. Yep. I would love also for you to share with everyone um, what you shared with me about when you did for like when you first started having kids and what you would do, like what your routine was like, how you'd go and sit on the couch. Cause I feel like a lot of moms and just any, anyone, busy women can relate to that. And it 
I don't know, just shows that you've been there too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like, and my husband, again, he, he was a professional athlete. So I didn't have a lot of help with my kids despite popular belief. And mm-hmm. we moved to Texas from Ireland. Cause that's where my husband is from and where we lived. Um, my daughter was nine months old and my son was at one and a half and we had no family help. We've literally packed, moved, and we were here. My husband was working 14 hours a day. Wow. And he was left with the two kids without any help. Wow. So I think it is just like sitting there and complaining is going to burn as many, like as much energy is going to take me through as much energy waste as actually using that time to accomplish something. So whenever I first had my son, what I would do, I called a whole bunch of gyms around me and I was like, Hey, what is the gym? Like, can I bring my son in a car seat? And like, what is your time that you're not busy? So I can bring my son in our car seat so I can work out. So I'll drive 45 minutes each way mm-hmm. to the gym with my son in a car seat in a time that worked for the gym that wasn't busy and get my workout in. And I kind of like worked all my schedule around that time in the gym because it was important to me. Mm-hmm. And whenever we moved here, first thing, I have a funny story. We actually got a house after we found the gym that we liked. <laughs> so oh we my gosh, that's so funny. 100% <laughs> <true story. laughs> well, so, you, again, you got to march to the beat of your own drum and do what works for you in life. And you knew that that was what you guys needed. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love everything that you've had to say. It's just so good. Before I let you go though, will you speak to the people who are out there thinking, okay, so it's, it's about to be March and I have, uh, I got to be in a bikini by June 2nd or whatever, you know? And so even though they're listening to this and they're nodding their heads and they're saying, yes, yes, totally. Okay. What would your advice be for them? Is there something that they should check out on your website as well? Like, do you have other resources for them? And what, like, what is your advice for them? Because, you know, come, you know, a couple of weeks, they might start falling into some of these habits. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, and I love that. And like, that is not to say that, like with everything that we talked about, that is not to say that I'm against like anything that is like preparing, preparing you to an event that is about to come up, like mm-hmm. a summer vacation or a spring break vacation or whatever it is, or a wedding, or I don't know. Um, it is okay to set those goals and to push a little bit more whenever you are on those goals, but understanding that there is going to be like an after, after the after, and you know, like there needs to be continuity. You cannot just like do a crash until you get to your vacation. And then after that, you expect to stay there. So, um, I'm, I, I have, um, I just launched my belly and buns five week challenge Ooh. the challenge for five weeks and that was one of oh. the things that I kept on being asked when I competed in and after I had kids it's like well you're Brazilian you know like Brazilian people are known for like having nice butts and I'm like yeah. okay okay <laughs> and, and then I just show us like, the ways <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> show us the way how do you do it how do we get a good butt yeah. <laughs> yeah so and and with my experience and um and then after having kids people are like oh my god how like how do I do to you know help with my belly and there are a lot of things that come into play when after you have kids so I've created a program that kind of like helps with that especially right now when people are starting already to think about summer and and uh uh, what's next and bikini so i put together the belly and buns five week challenge and then after that you have the option to stay on a more sustainable kind of plan that is going to be kind of like the part of the marathon so you have the challenge for five weeks and then after that you can you can stay for something that is more ongoing, more sustainable. And then you can have the little challenges in between whenever you join the more sustainable plan. Wow. But it's just very aligned, like everything that I said. You can have the mm-hmm. marathon and then you have the little sprints in between, but understanding that you have to stay consistent. Um, yes. So that's the five week uh, um, belly and bones uh, challenge. And um, you can find me on Instagram as well. If you have any questions, I am, hold on, let me show here. Natalia Melofit. I got this yeah. shirt because my name was so long to uh, spell, but you guys so listening on the podcast is Natalia, N-A-T-H-A-L-I-A, Melo, M-E-L-O, Fit. 
Uh, and I'm the one who answers the DM DMs. Um, that is the one thing that I cannot let go because I really feel like that's where you really can get in touch with the people who care about you and who really want answers. And if you want to check out my free resources, my website, and um, I put together something for you guys, which is um, a little PDF and a little cheat sheet on how I got abs after two C-sections. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. So it's kind of like, um, again, everybody's going to be different. And, but that, that's one question that I get asked all the time. Oh my God, how did you do it? So you can download it uh, completely free. It's at Natalia Mello Fit, N A T H A L I A, Mello Fit. I, I'm consistent across the board. It's a difficult name, but I, I kept it consistent. Mm -hmm. um, NataliaMelloFit.com forward slash abs. Forward slash abs. Okay. Yeah, we're on it. Yeah. And then um, this is a free plan. But if you're like more ready to take like action right now, the challenge for the belly and bones challenge that I mentioned is starting on March 7th. So whenever this air airs, there is still time to uh, to join. Yes, sign up. Oh, I want to do it too. Everyone do it with us. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> That'll be fun. I'm excited. Like, nice yeah, we're all going to be get. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much again. I just really appreciate your time. You're so inspiring and you have so much knowledge to share. I know we're all going to keep up with you and continue to follow you on Instagram and try out all these resources. And of course, join that challenge. March 7th is when it starts. Yeah. March 7th. Okay, March 7th. And we just go to your website to sign up for that or to get the info. Yeah. Whatever you go to nataliamalofit.com is literally going to be the first. You're going to find it all. Yeah. If you're joining, um, before March, um, March 7th, if you're checking it out, if you're listening this a few months later, you can always go to my website and we like run challenges from time to time. And it's going to be right there on the first page of the website. Fantastic. Well, I feel so inspired, ready to get my healthy habits on. Thank you again. This was amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. For the full interview, just check out the Be Zen with Brit podcast. <laughs>